Hello and welcome back and today I want to answer a really simple question. Why, 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 when you're looking online trying to buy big old hard drives for your network attached storage device, why is it that sometimes, sometimes, enterprise grade hard drives are lower in price than that of pro series drives. It's really weird, isn't it? When you think about it, enterprise grade drives are designed for data centers and enormous rack mount environments that generally have the best performance and the highest durability overall, somehow have a price point occasionally, and by occasionally, I would say more than 25% of the time, in fact, have a lower price than that of Pro Series drives, which can often have a lower performance point, they have a lower durability point overall, and a lower sustained performance, and are designed for smaller systems. Why, why, why? And in today's video, I'm going to go through those reasons. We've looked at a bunch of different Pro and Enterprise level drives, and I'm going to give you a bunch of reasons why that is the case. But before we go any further, a number of you might have come to this video and gone, actually, no, I've looked. I've tried looking for enterprise grade drive drives, and all the ones I find are always more expensive than pro series drives. What is this video about? What are you giving it all that for? I get it, I get it, I get it. Hear me out. So I wanted to prepare some examples. So even on the run up to kind of storyboard and writing up this video, I can tell you right now, over on scan right now, you can look at the 20 TB WD Ultra Star. That's knocking around for £394. And that compared with the WD Red Pro series drive, that was knocking for £469. That's more than half a, you know, half a, you know, a century more. It's, it's too much more. And again, yes, that's one drive. The minute you start racking up more drives, it's going to cost you a bit more. Then I looked at B&H, that US website there. I looked at the 18TB Seagate drives there and the Iron Wolf Pro for £349, but the Exos series for $339, both of them dollars, I should say, my mistake. So again, still $10 saving, which I know is one drive, but it all adds up. Then I went over to the US again, and I went to New Egg, and I looked at the WD Red Pro 10TB, retailing for $269. Then I looked at the WD Gold, an enterprise-grade drive, same website, $239, a saving of another $30 per drive in that 10TB. Then I went to Amazon Germany, and Amazon Germany, um, Iron Wolf Pro, knocking around for 365 euros. Um, Seagate Exos 14 TB, 336. Another saving of around $30 there. And finally, I went to Walmart, of all places, and looked at the Toshiba NAS Pro series. Yes, Toshiba, I don't talk about them enough. And that was an 8 TB drive. And that was the Pro series for $302. And the MG06 Enterprise Drive for $260, a saving of just over $40 for a single drive. So yes, there are examples out there. But now, let's talk about why those differences exist. Show me the money. The first major reason, and I'm sure you've already thought of this, is quite simply commercial demand. Sell, sell, buy, buy, supply and demand overall. And when it comes down to it, Pro Series drives, the way they're marketed and how they're marketed in conjunction with very specific systems, as well as certain capacities going higher and lower in terms of public perception and demand, make a big, big difference. Now, in the terms of the Pro Series, whenever you look at Pro Series drives and you look at the breakdown of available prices, what you find is the uh, more common and more popular capacities, your 4TB, your 6TB, your 10TB, it's kind of the, the statement capacities there, they're always more expensive. And they don't even follow the normal price per terabyte algorithm there. The popular capacities always cost more per terabyte because that's what they know people like the most. Whereas when you look at the middling capacities, the 3TB, the 8TB, the 14 TB, the odds numbers, what you find is the price for those weirdly dips. And again, that is another example of dynamic pricing based on demand. And you find that a lot more on the Pro Series overall. So a lot of the time when two drives are the same capacity in Pro and Enterprise, that dynamic pricing can lead to Pro Series drives becoming Artificially is a strong word, but certainly market demand led more expensive. Now, when you look at the enterprise drives, what you find is with the smaller capacities, they cost more. But as soon as you go to the higher capacity of enterprise, the price per terabyte does drop. And that's because the price per terabyte of enterprise grade drives is very rarely as affected by dynamic pricing because they're not marketed so loudly in such an obvious 
consumer facing way. So the result is with the larger capacity drives, you have a more natural organic increase in pricing where the price per capacity tends, not always completely, but it tends to get lower per terabyte as you go higher up the drives, as one might expect. Whereas again, in the Pro Series drives, because there is sale and demand, there is point of sale, and there is an element of consumer attention and drive behind certain capacities that does affect the layout and the price breakdown compared with Pro versus enterprise grade drives. Show me the money. This next one may seem a little less obvious, but the more you think about it, the more sense it's gonna make. Quite simply, bulk purchasing. When it comes to enterprise grade drives, they are purchased for enormous scale environments. Very rarely, and I think most uh, hard drive brands rely on this, very rarely do you see enterprise grade drives being purchased in small volume. Now, to put that into capacity, when you look at the hierarchy for drives that are designed for um, different server or 24-7 environments, they come into three categories. You've got your normal server drives, these are your WD Red, your Seagate Iron Wolf, or your Toshiba N300. Then in the middle, you've got your Pro Series there, the Pro Series being the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro, WD Red Pro, and the N300 Pro. And then at the end, you've got your Enterprise Grade, your Data Center. These are your Ultrastar, your Exos, your Synology uh, 5300, Toshiba MG series. These are your enterprise grade. Now, of those three groups, your normal drives are designed for servers for zero to eight bays. Your Pro series is designed to between 16, or between eight and 24 bays. But the enterprise grade one is designed for basically infinite because you're gonna have server arrays running with another server array, either as an intelligent JBOD or duping from another one. These can go enormous. We're seeing bigger and bigger Rackman server arrays. Synology released recently the HD6500, a 60 bay system. Now, why is that all important there with regards to bulk purchasing? Well, the, um, most hard drive manufacturers know that the enterprise grade drives are going to be bought in larger number. On top of that, they're going to be rebought as the larger frequency of data recycling takes place, whereas a home user is going to be less frequent in how often they replace the drives in their system. Enterprise level customers have a larger repurchase circle going on there. Consequently, enterprise grade drives, that's another reason why the pricing isn't as crazy series versus series because they know the end users buying them aren't buying one or two they're buying a deck of 20 they're buying a deck of 25 they are buying drives in enormous bulk to replace the existing drives they had already in bulk or to buy a new server array something pro series drives don't do because one they may not be designed for that number of bays or quite simply that the end user buying them expects them to last a lot longer within their network environment so again Bulk purchasing plays a big part in the pricing difference between these two because hard drive manufacturers know they can lower the price a little bit on these drives because they're going to be purchased in larger numbers. Show me the money. And finally, this is one I've talked about in other videos many times, but it does bear a lot of relevance. Enterprise grade drives are noisier and more power hungry. They are designed to be more industrial. They are designed for sustained utilization there. So that's not just having a high performance threshold, but the ability to hold that threshold for as long as possible. Um, enterprise grade drives are designed with much more rugged architecture inside. The result is that they consume more power generally, either in standby or general um, access. That doesn't affect all drive. There are exceptions to the rule. But on top of that, because of all those harder components inside, these parts inside from the arm that's flicking between the individual platters to the platters themselves being higher in number result in the drive being significantly noisy or something home users are just not going to utilize. Now, home, uh, because of that, they have to make them more appealing. And again, due to that trade-off in their larger volume of utilization, that means the price generally is found a little lower. Whereas in the non-enterprise drives, your Pro Series over here, they're going to consume a little less power, they're going to make a little keyword, little less noise. And ultimately, because of the consumer angle that's being um, aimed at there, and once again, factoring in that um, commercial demand and the bulk purchasing there, as well as 
the end user that's getting them been a little bit more aware of what they're getting within this smaller scale environment and wanted to spend a little sensibly and being very noise and power aware, the result is that between the two of them, things are a little bit more off the chain on the enterprise grade side of things and all of these elements end up resulting in why some enterprise grade drives end up being more expensive than pro counterparts of the same capacity. But there is more to it than this. If you can think of any reasons that I didn't touch on in this video, why some enterprise grade drives cost less than pro series, do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, click like. It helps me understand what I'm doing right and wrong. Click subscribe as we're going to cover the subject of enterprise and pro series drives quite a lot in September of 2022, coming very, very soon. And overall, thank you so much for watching. Use the free advice section if you need help with anything. And other than that, I will see you next time.